Okay, we're recording. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate everybody for joining us today. I apologize about the little bit of a late start. Um, you know, computer issues are always fun. <laughs> so I had to restart my computer and, and go from there. So uh, just so you guys are all aware, this lesson is being recorded for learning purposes. And then just a quick reminder about classroom expectations. One, make sure you're following along with the Nearpod lesson. Um, that is in the chat right there. It's the first thing in the chat. Um, if you're unable to get on the Nearpod, please just you know respond uh, via chat or something like that, just so I know you're participating in here. And as you're using the chat, make sure you're using it um, respectfully and appropriately. And then to respond to questions and instructions the first time. Okay, so what we're going to be going over today is basically unit two. Um, we're going to talk a lot about educational theories. So we'll have um, the the course is very based in theory, <laughs> like it says. Um, but before I go into that, let's just go into uh, what's going on for this week. So uh, yesterday, you should have completed lesson one quiz as well as the lesson one assignment if you haven't done all of those yet just make sure you get those done and i will get those graded i did put in zeros today as we were there um, today what's going to be assigned is um, lesson two quiz as well as the lesson two assignment and then of course those will be due wednesday of next week um, there so what we're going to be working today if you go to content and then you go to unit two you can see that we have a, a quiz and an assignment. And what we'll do is we'll go over those, just take a peek at them, what to expect at the very end of class there. Um, and let's just preview those so you can kind of see what they look like so you're aware of what you need to do. So, so the quiz here, it's going to be talking about the educational theories that we're going to go over in just a little bit. Um, not very bit, not very strenuous, just five questions uh, talking about anywhere from Bloom's taxonomy, which we'll talk about, to uh, Maslow hierarchy of needs and everything in between. And then the lesson two assignment is as well doing a little bit of um, research just what interests you the most and then just writing a little bit about that theory and researching that theory a in a little more detail than we went over in class so so that is it before i begin does anybody have any questions regarding to the course anything like that okay if you do have any questions and roll through here, please let me know. Okay, so first off, we gotta talk about what is a theory, okay? Um, a theory is to guide their questions, research, and interpretation of data, developmental scholar construct or theories. A theory is an organized system of principles and explanations for a particular phenomenon. So when we talk about theories it's kind of like a lens that you are looking through um, about why things are and how to interpret things so in education and child development there's quite a few um, but we're going to go over just seven of those today um, some of the more um, more in-depth ones uh, so the first one we're going to talk about is biological theories then behaviorism and social learning theories. Next one is social dynamic theories, cognitive development theories, the cognitive process theories, uh, social cultural theories, and then developmental system theories. Okay, so let's talk first about biological um, theories. Uh, these theories focus on genetic factors, um, physiological structure, and functions of the body and the philosophical processes that help a child adapt and survive in their environment. So the emphasis on this is on nature, okay? So you may have heard of like Charles Darwin, right? 
which is Darwinism, which is talks about evolution, right? As you, what we're doing is as a species, this is the biological theory. And the, as a species, we're learning and evolving over time and we adapt to our environment. And so now we've grown into what we are now, which is very social beings um, because nature has kind of shaped us that way. So that is the biological theory. The next one is behaviorism and social learning theories. So uh, just so you're aware, I am a, I guess, a behaviorist. Um, I'm actually a board certified behavior analyst. And so I really look at this kind of theory. I like looking through the lens of life as this theory, but this theory focuses on environmental stimuli and learning processes that lead to behavioral change. Um, when a child acts, the environment responds with a reward or a punishment. And the em emphasis on this is nurture. Okay. So basically what I'm saying, uh, how I like to look at things is through, uh, if we're reinforced, we're going to enjoy something more. So for example, I'm going to take a lot of, a lot of people, I'm not going to say just younger people. But a lot of people like video games. Okay. So video games, why are there, why do they keep playing video games? That because it's very reinforcing to them. They really like doing that. Um, a lot of other people do not like certain things and we stay away from those things, right? And we're and if we can shape the way the rewards are in life we can accomplish certain things, right? And so the theorists are there like B.F. Skinner, Watson, Ivan Padlov, um, Donald Barr, or Bear, and Albert Bandra. Um, the next one is the social dynamic theory. This theory focuses on how family and so, uh, society affects how children control and express intrinsic urges um, such as sexuality and aggression. Social relationships affect children's basic trust in others and perception of identity in themselves. So this one would be more along the lines of like Sigmund Freud, Anna Feud, and Eric Erickson. Okay, cognitive development theory. These theories believe that children think under, undergo transformation towards increasingly abstract and systematic patterns. It may depend on the early early experiences. Child will eventually see single events from a several variety of viewpoints. And so the theorists in here, uh, John Piaget, um, Kohlberg is a big one, all this. So what you wanna do now is just kind of think of what interests you the most. The cognitive process theory, this is a theory focused on both nature and nurture. Children are born with the basic capacity to perceive, interpret, and remember information. Those capacities change with brain maturation, experience, and reflection. So basically what they're saying here is that um, depending upon your basic cognitive ability, you're going through experience going to change and grow. Social cultural is the emphasis on nature theorists believe children will naturally learn in an un uh, use communication intellectual abilities and social emotional skills but families community culture influence how they carry out these tasks so this is vygotsky um Dr bruner or some of the big ones theorists in there developmental system theory it's uh factors inside the children's nature and outside child's nurture combined. So it's taken the first two we talked about and influence the development patterns. Their own activities from sleeping and eating patterns to watching TV and playing sports are influenced development throughout their life cycle. All that's cut off there. Um, so as we're looking, no single theory can explain all aspects of a child's development. An eccentric approach is one that includes many perspectives, including some nurture and some 
uh, nature and some nurture is probably the most useful. So I think combining different theories together, you really maybe get a broader perspective of how we learn, okay? So now we're gonna go into the ones most commonly used in education. So we're gonna watch a little video to kind of tell us a little bit about that, and then we will go from there. Bloom's Taxonomy, or the revised version that you see here, is really powerful in face-to-face -face learning, in traditional learning, but it's equally powerful when thinking about online learning. So at the bottom of this uh, pyramid, uh, of this triangle, is the, the baseline thinking, the kind of remembering, recalling facts, and that's really useful, and it's um, important for students to learn content at times. But that's only as a springboard to higher kinds of thinking. So as we move up the triangle, you can see the, the thinking gets um, more and more complicated. For example, right up the top uh, is creating new knowledge or designing or building something new. So at a really basic level, um, this bottom level might be, if we're thinking about design technology, what are the different types of wood? Whereas create might be to design and build a brand new bookshelf. So what does that mean in your particular domain area? What is the activity that you're setting for your students today? At what level is that pitched and are they ready for that? So are they ready to analyze if they don't yet understand or remember? So it's a great pyramid to keep in your mind when planning your online courses. If you look at your entire week's activities and they're all remember, read this, we'll do a test, read this, we'll do a test. Maybe it's a, a chance to look a bit further up the pyramid and say, is there something else I could get the students to be doing with this information? All right. So Bloom's taxonomy is one that is used um, in education as we're trying to get uh, deeper level thinking, okay? So a lot of like just the regular tests, like, so for example, I have doing a quiz right now, which is just basically remembering and understanding, okay? Well, the reason we do the assignment, the assignment is more of finding something, analyzing it, evaluating it. And so it has a higher level of, of taxonomy here. And so you're, you're thinking deeper and stuff on those type of things. Okay, the next one we're gonna talk about is kind of stages of development. Um, if we look over here to, uh, to infancy, so I believe this is Eric Erickson. Oh, I hope I can remember right. I believe Eric Erickson's is the stages of development. But anyways, he talks about, um, all the different stages and the different things that that we can do. There's like one or another, okay? Um, in infancy, you think about a baby, right? They, it's trust versus mistrust. I have a, a little nephew that is in this infancy stage and he is, he mistrusts me because <laughs> I've teased him a little bit and tickled him and he didn't like it. Um, but you know they really trust their mother and that kind of stuff and you know some babies they're really one way or another right they'll either trust the people or they mistrust them those that give them food and reinforcement they get that early childhood it's autonomy versus shame and doubt so are they going and, and at this youngest stage if you're doing a lot of corrective things to these kids and not giving them it's like yes you can do this keep doing it some kids they take off and they're able to do things by themselves but some people some young kids they're really um scared to actually do things they doubt what they're doing and they get that kind of doubt in my opinion is because uh we're too corrective right instead of maybe it's like hey try it like this right instead of being no you're doing it wrong right um a lot of early stages no is just a word you don't want to use, right? The next one's preschool age. It's innovative innovation versus guilt. So same thing, having kind of that autonomy. School age is industry versus inferiority, right? Where you're trying to find out where you know 
are you good at school or are you not good at school, right? And sometimes you feel inferior if you, you struggle learning, but that's just part of the process. The next one's adolescence, which you, most of you are. Um, it He breaks it down talking about identity versus role confusion, right? Are you learning how, what is unique about you, how you learn. We call this metacognition where you learn, it's the process of learning how you learn, right? What you like versus role confusion. It's like, I don't know where I fit in, right? I don't know how things work. And I think this, this identity versus role confusion is kind of a little bit throughout our lives that we're trying to figure out who we really are, how we gonna go there. Once you get into the young adult stage, it's intimacy versus uh, isolation. So you're either probably going to partner off with somebody um, and probably have kids or something, or you're going to kind of stay alone and focus maybe more on work or something like that. Um, I'm getting old, so I'm in the middle adulthood. <laughs> um, generosity versus stagnation, right? So. It's basically, am I raising a family or doing that? Or am I just still maybe back in some of this isolation isolation stage? And then the last one, a match, uh, maturity, it's ego um, integrity versus despair. So if I'm older and in a rest home and I'm looking back at my life, am I proud of what I did? Or am I regretting that I didn't do more? Okay. So that's the theory of Eric Erickson um, stages of development. Uh, this one is talking about operant conditioning. So this is behaviorism. So I, I lean to this one a little bit more because I just a lot of uh, just classes and stuff that I've taken in it. So it's classical conditioning versus operant conditioning. So classic conditioning, there's a... Uh, Famous study done by uh, Ivan Podlove with his dogs, where he'd actually ring a bell and give them a piece of meat. Um, and then he took the meat away and he would just ring the bell and they would still salvinate because they knew he conditioned a response in them saying that they're going to do that. Operant conditioning is a little bit more into that is if you see something before, um, this was uh, B.F. Skinner. And so we talked about reinforcement and punishment. I talked about that a little bit on the lines of like, you know, telling a kid no, right? Or something like that. That's more of a punishment kind of thing. And it really kind of hurts them. But if you're reinforcing them and encouraging them, that's reinforcement. Okay, let's watch another video on our next one we're going to talk about. So, when you think of intelligence, you normally think of the one intelligence that most people refer to, and that is intellectual intelligence. And Howard Gardner says there are actually multiple types of intelligence, and I'm going to go through them with this video. Now, the first is called logical mathematical intelligence, and this Hey guys, I apologize. I think my internet went out for a second and then cut back in. Let me reshare my screen real quick. Okay, I'm going to redo this. I apologize. Here we go. So this is, uh, once again, it's talking about Howard Gardner's multiple intelligences. So when you think of intelligence, you normally think of the one intelligence that most people refer to, and that is intellectual intelligence. And Howard Gardner says there are actually multiple types of intelligence, and I'm going to go through them with this video. Now, the first is called logical mathematical intelligence. And this is basically what you think of when you think of intellectual intelligence. This would be stuff like logic, or um, if you're good at taking tests, 
you will probably have pretty high logical mathematical intelligence. Um, this also has to do a lot with critical thinking and making and reading graphs, as well as organization. If you like to organize your stuff and keep it very organized and are good at organizing it, then you probably have very high logical mathematical intelligence. Now, the second one is called verbal linguistic. And if you have high verbal linguistic intelligence, you are probably good at saying that word. You are good at poems. You are good at rhyming words, finding words that rhyme. You are good at reading and writing. And you're good at learning other languages. You learn them pretty quickly compared to other people. And you're probably great at turning a little tiny story into a huge, fascinating story that can enthrall an entire room. The third is interpersonal. An interpersonal intelligence would be like understanding other people's emotions. Understanding what the social etiquette and norms are of this situation. You have to be able to be good at reception to other people's moods and what motivates them. If you are a business administrator and you're good at motivating someone, you probably have pretty high interpersonal intelligence. If you're a good leader or just a manager in general, and you can coordinate work with other people, you are probably really intelligent in this interpersonal field. The fourth is body kinesthetic, which means you are good at handling and maneuvering your own body. You can handle objects skillfully and basically move them around however you want them to, as well as your body. People that are very intelligent in the body kinesthetic field are dancers, actors, soldiers, and even many sports athletes. The fifth is musical intelligence, and this is, and this is associated with rhythmic and harmonic music. Being able to interpret sounds, rhythms, and tones, and pitches and being able to understand them on a level that most people can't understand. If you're good at this, you can probably compose or at least play an instrument. The next is visual spatial. And this is like basically how well can you visualize something in your mind's eye? How well can you think of something in your mind? And another example of this would be how well can you get through a maze? Can you see it in your mind's eye where you're at in the maze or a cornfield? And Gardner went so far as to say that this could even be used as to judging distances. Or how well can you read a map? And the next type of intelligence is called intrapersonal intelligence. And this is different from interpersonal intelligence. Intrapersonal intelligence is more about how you understand yourself. Are you self-aware? Do you know what feelings you are feeling? What emotions go through your mind? When you are in certain situations, how well can you control your thoughts and actions and feelings in general? Do you know your strengths and weaknesses? And the last, which came out a couple years after Howard Gardner came out with his multiple intelligences theory, is called natural intelligence, naturalistic intelligence. And this has to do with being able to recognize stuff in the real world, basically flowers and trees and anything that's living. Hunters and fishermen are pretty intelligent in the naturalistic field. So are chefs and botanists that can grow plants. And basically anyone that is learned in any biological science is pretty intelligent in the... Okay, so that is Howard Gardner's Multiple Intelligences. I actually really love this one because I can see my self with some of those things, right? So I have what maybe I call superpowers that are really good and some things that I have kind of weaknesses in, right? And, you know, some people very book smart, maybe they do really or book smart or logical smart. They're really good in school, but some of us that aren't maybe as great in school are good in like musically or body smart or naturalistic or, or understand themselves really well or picture things in their minds. So we all have different, like, I guess, superpowers and best ways that we learn. And that's why I really like Howard Gardner's thing. The next one we're going to talk about is um, Sigmund Freud, uh, where he has uh, ID, ego, and super ego. So Sigmund Freud, he was a psychologist, um, and he talked about we basically have three different um, – aspects and we only really show two of these right so we have our our conscious of what we perceive for everybody out there and those you can see your super ego which is your what we call morality um, or your ego which is um your reality right and we try to play those and then he says d 
deep under the surface is hidden these different things. And the one thing is hidden is your ID, your instinct, right? So what you like, what you really like, what you're not going to tell the world um, and showing that. So it's really about understanding yourself and knowing that you have different things underneath you. And sometimes like we, we don't even know that we have those because they're kind of unconscious things that we, we understand. Okay. So it says conscious, you're pre-conscious. So you kind of understand that. And then you're unconscious of what you do. The last one that I'm going to talk about is uh, what we call Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I really like this one too. Um, it has the, this pyramid because it talks about like the pyramid, you have to have a good foundation and then everything builds on top of that. Well, what we talk about, he has basic needs. Um, so in order for us to learn or to be able to do things and survive, we need our basic needs met. Like we need air. Air would be a basic need, right? We need water, warmth, rest. Um, as it moves up, safety and security. If you're in a place that's constantly a bad place to be, you're not going to be able to have your basic needs met. And next you go to the psychological needs where you need to be belonging, um, feel loved, have friends, have relationships. Um, the next one, esteem needs. So being able to feel accomplished, right? Accomplishing things, act, acts. And then the last one he talks, if you can get to the very top point, you have all these built up. You have like what's self-actualization, which I think is more of like finding harmony within yourself and being um, just happy with everything. And once you have those, all those needs met, you can learn at all of those different levels about different things. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you guys now, I know I've talked a lot and I apologize. I should probably break up this lesson a little bit, but I want to ask you which theory interests you the most and why of the theories we went over, the theories within education. And you're gonna want to know this because you have um, your assignments on it, right? And the different theories. And what I'm gonna do, so hopefully this doesn't screw up anybody typing. If it does, I apologize. I'm gonna go back to the very beginning and I'm just gonna open it up so you guys can go back. Okay, so I'm sharing that back now. But you can go back and you can kind of look at some of those. And if I did mess you up, maybe just put it in the chat. So sorry, guys. So what theories do you find the most interesting? Oh, you can't go past the video? Ah, dang it. Okay, let me try to turn that off. Maybe that's put us... Is it going to make you watch the video again? I apologize. Did that put you guys all back at the... This uh, board? Yeah, okay. All right. I like multiple intelligences. One, because it shows how people can have different personalities and be good, different things. This disproves the traditional assumption that there are only one way to be smart. Yes, I love that. Really love that. One one thing that people have done too is they've they've come out with things like IQ, right? 
So IQ is just like almost like a book smart kind of test, right? And some people score low in some areas on the IQ than others. And I guess it does have its place of looking at um, cognitive ability and that kind of stuff. But really, we, we're all smart in different areas. And as I said before, I like think of like um, superpowers. Okay. Uh, states of development, it shows the stages that they go through the growing. I like that one too. That one's really fun. The behavior and social learning theory because it shows uh, much person's behavior can affect something and how you can change it. Yep. They said I'm a, I had a lot of behaviorist tendencies in me because, you know, I've studied a lot of that, but I believe like we can shape people's behavior by the way we treat them, right? In aspect. And we're going to go away from something that if somebody's not a pleasant person, you don't want to be by them, right? Okay. All right. Well, this is my contact information. I think some of you guys got accidentally put there, so I apologize. Um, let me just go through a couple things here. Remember your quiz. All of these you should be able to get from what we just talked about, right? Uh, Bloom's taxonomy, we talked about that. The stages of development. BF Skinner's operant conditioning, the Gardner's multiple intelligences, and Maslow hierarchy of needs. So you should be able to answer those pretty easily, as well as um, looking at one of the theories we talked about and going through that. So, and answering some questions there. Okay, so that's all I have. I'm going to stop the recording, but I'm going to stick after for any.